Hello world, welcome to Farm the Market. Something interesting happened yesterday regarding the VXX. In case you missed the news, Barclays announced new creations for the VXX exchange traded note will be halted until further notice. The bank said it ran out of issuance capacity, whatever that means. They have the right to hold creations at their sole discretion at any time, so they don't really have to explain themselves and certainly they chose not to. But that excuse was kind of silly in my opinion, especially considering that the article mentions that as of last Friday they have only used about 10% of the total amount they can issue. This is not unprecedented and should not be considered bad news per se. However, it's certainly out of the ordinary and I thought it would be interesting to review some of the implications. I think BXX is generally misunderstood. Many traders and investors like to oversimplify things and just look at it as a long volatility ETF. By the way, it's not even an ETF, it's an ETN, exchange traded note. So let's just start with an overview of what BXX actually is. Before I go any further, I want to mention that along the video I will be using extracts from the VXX prospectus. Do not confuse it with the fact sheet. The prospectus is the very long document that contains all the information about VXX. Feel free to pause the video to take a closer look. For more details, refer to the prospectus. Ok, let's get started. VXX is an exchange traded note managed by Barclays that provides exposure to the S&P 500 BIX Short Term Futures Index Total Return. This index is a constant 1 month rolling loan position in the first and second month VXX futures contract. This basically means that it tracks the short term volatility on the BIX term structure. In order to replicate this position, the index will be long the first and second month VIX futures in a percentage corresponding to where in their life cycle they are. Futures have a defined lifespan, so as each day goes by, a future that started exactly as a 1 month future will become a 29 day future, then a 28 day future, and so on until expiration. That's why the position must be rolled out constantly in the corresponding percentages. I think an example will help. For this example I will call the first month VIX future F1 and the second month VIX future F2. Let's keep things simple and assume we are starting a new cycle that is exactly 30 days long. On the first day of the cycle, the index will be holding 100% of F1. The time to expiration is exactly 30 days, so for today the index can achieve its goal by only holding F1. Each day that goes by, the index must switch a portion of the position from F1 to F2. Remember, the goal is to provide a constant 1 month exposure. So, by day 10, 2 thirds of the position will be on F1 and one third will be on F2. By day 15, exactly the midpoint of the cycle, the index will be holding F1 and F2 in equal amounts. By day 20, the position is now one third on F1 and two thirds on F2. I think you get the idea. After day 30, F1 will disappear, the index will be holding 100% on F2, and F2 will become the new F1 and the cycle will repeat itself over and over again. On this table you can see how Barclays displays the VXX holdings data on their website. It's dated, but you get the idea. When this was posted, the March future was F1 and April future was F2. Each was being held in the corresponding amount given the day of that cycle. As a side note, I would like to mention something very important about VXX. You have to understand VXX is a decaying asset. Think about it, it seeks to replicate a long volatility position. Therefore, just like being long an option, in the long run you have time against you. That's why if you look at a long term chart of the VXX, it seems that it always tends to go down. It's not magic, it's just part of its nature given the index it tracks, and therefore every relevant market participant is aware of this fact and it's priced in. In other words, if you are long this instrument, there is usually a headwind. Now, this is very important. This doesn't mean you can just short BXX and make a lot of money. As you can see in the chart, when volatility spikes, the moves can be brutal if you are short. There is no free launch in the market and even less so in the volatility space. 
As with any other index, the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index total return is non-tradable. If a market participant wants exposure to what the index tracks, they would have to do every day what we reviewed on the example, which is cumbersome for most market participants. That's where Barclays comes in. For a fee, they take on the task of providing a tradable ETN exchange traded note, in this case the VXX, that tracks as close as possible the performance of the index and also provides a market for VXX by selling from inventory or creating new shares or buying back VXX shares. There are other authorized participants involved, but to keep it simple in this video, we will just assume Barclays handles the whole process alone. ETNs are often just bundled together with ETFs by traders and investors, and although they are very similar at first glance, they have a few differences worth noting. For this video, I'm just going to focus on what holders are actually exposed to. Simplifying, an ETF holds directly the assets it tracks, and those assets are independent of all the other assets or liabilities of the ETF manager. The assets are completely segregated and when a delisting occurs, for whatever reason, the assets will be liquidated at market value and the proceeds transferred directly to the ETF holder. On the other hand, an ETN is actually an unsecured debt obligation issued by the managing bank. Unsecured means that the holdings used to hedge the ETN, or any other assets held by the issuer for that matter, are not considered as collateral. If there's a credit event and the issuer is insolvent or goes bankrupt, the ETN holders will have to wait in line with the rest of the unsecured creditors to try to get something back. Of course, this is an extreme scenario. And by bringing this up, I am not implying that Barclays is in financial trouble, and that's why they halted the VXX creations. But I thought it would be worth pointing out since people often put ETFs and ETNs in the same basket. Perhaps the most important concept to understand given what's going on on VXX market price these days is the indicative value of VXX. As we reviewed in the example, the value of the index VXX tracks is a simple calculation derived from the first two VIX future contracts. This calculation is what is known as indicative value, nothing more than that. Therefore, under normal market conditions, the price of VXX is not I repeat, is not exposed to the dynamics of supply and demand for BXX itself. Let's assume a hypothetical trading day where the BXX futures curve is static during the whole trading session, and at those levels the BXX indicative value is 25. BXX will trade at 25 the whole day. It doesn't matter if there is only one share or a million shares traded. Demand will not move the price. Barclays will just create as many new BXX shares as needed to cover the demand at the or very close to the indicative value. For BXX, we could say we were under normal market conditions before March 14. Barclays was doing its job, and whenever buyers showed up, inventory was used or creations were done as needed. The constant supply provided by Barclays prevented that any other holders of BXX tried to sell far from the indicative value. There is balance in the market. However, the balance was broken on March 14. Without Barclays, the market is broken. The supply dried up, so other holders of VXX are on the driver's seat now. They have no incentive to keep the market functioning in an orderly manner. Their incentive is to sell as high as possible. This is exacerbated when on the other side you have a relevant number of participants short VXX. When those two elements combine, the price disruptions can be brutal. I couldn't find a reliable number for the open short interest of VXX, but people I follow that I consider well informed are talking about 50%. That's a lot. That could explain in part why we had today a huge spike where the market price of VXX was almost 60% above the indicative value. On these charts you can see how the market price and the indicative value usually behave. They are very close to each other. That, of course, until March 14, when the divergence started and then the big spike on March 15. Of course, those are not the only players. There's a lot of talk out there about another quote-unquote great short squeeze, like GME or AMC. Everyone is looking for the next meme stock lottery ticket. However, people need to understand BXX is not a stock. 
As we already reviewed, under normal market conditions, its price is not determined by supply and demand. The price of VXX will converge back to the indicative value. It's not a matter of if, but when. Even in an extreme scenario, if Barclays decides to redeem VXX, that would be done at the indicative value as well. It's impossible to know how long this situation will last. It could take days or weeks. I'm sure for some traders and investors, this situation has been quite the baptism by fire. I hope the damage wasn't too bad, and eventually this turns into a learning experience. It's always important to do proper research before investing on any asset, and especially sophisticated assets linked to volatility like VXX. Until next time. I hope you found this video interesting. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for your time.